Well, I want to state right up front that this is not a how-to video on how to put together a Kibler Woods Runner rifle. All I'm doing is basically just sort of documenting what I did as I went along and how I did it. Part of it, a little bit of how I did it. If you really want a good video on how to put these things together, you can go to Kibler Long Rifles on YouTube. You can also go uh, to National Muzzleloader Rifle Association. They got really good videos on assembling rifles for kit, particularly Kibler, Kibler rifles. So, so there, again, this is not a how-to video. It's just sort of hitting some high spots of how I did it. So here goes. Got yeah, here is I got my, my Kibler Woods Runner kit came in a few days ago. I've been letting it sit and acclimate in the house there before I opened it up because I don't know what kind of humidity or temperatures or anything else it's been subject to from the time it left Ohio to the time it got here. So. I will say one thing. It is well packaged. <laughs> the kit is extremely well packaged. Let's see what's in here. Yeah, it looks like it might be the makings of a rifle. Well, as they say, okay. everything about it is, I mean, it's well packaged. And big and massive. I mean, that's a lot. <laughs> so anyway, that's the package opened up. Now we'll get together, get started working on this rascal. Okay. I'm not going to be in any hurry. I'm just going to take my time and enjoy it and wind up with a beautiful rifle. But yeah, you're, you're right about it. I'm going to pull that stock out to be cherry. Mm. Cherry, which is normally really plain wood. But look at it. This looks like it's got some real grain to it. I know, especially the look right here. Look at that. That's some pretty great. Yep. There's some good grain in it for a A cherry stock. Oh boy, that swamped barrel. That swamp barrel is nice. Well, Kibler, of course, recommends that you completely assemble the rifle before you start doing any polishing or finishing on it, which makes perfectly good sense. Well, I just got started here, and I've already cut myself. <laughs> oh. oh, Lordy. Uh, where the, uh, uh, the lugs are already cut, or milled into part of the barrel, where this little hole it was punched out, there's a tiny little burr left on the edge. And wouldn't you know, I found it right off. <laughs> so first thing I'm going to do is take a stone and knock those little edges off. So one of the first things I'm going to do is take
take the trigger guard out. Just going to tap that forward a little bit and out she comes. So you've got to get your trigger plate out first before you even put the trigger in. There's a tiny little spike on the end of that which goes back into the recess right there. Then you tap her down. But you got to put the trigger in first. That all has to that all has to go in together. So now we've got the the trigger installed. We had to install this little pin. Nice and loose like it's supposed to be, no binding. Well, <laughs> this is several hours later, because I have to say, the barrel, barrel tank did not just drop in. They lacked, actually they lacked quite a ways fitting. So it took me quite a while the inlet to finish the inlet and in here to get uh, the barrel and the tank and all to fit down into where all the screw holes and everything was lined up for my lock and your lock plate. The lock and the lock plate they went in just fine. They went in after I got the barrel and the tank inlet down to where the holes in here would line up. They were about a third of a hole off as far as this one as far as the rear goes back to the rear and these the lock bolt were uh it had to come down so the barrel had to go down quite a ways and back quite a ways in order to fit but i finally got it fitted and i must say that picking it up and just handling it what a difference between it and the Tennessee poor boy. That swamp barrel is so light and thin right in here. The balance point is beautiful. <laughs> it feels wonderful right now. And my gosh, what a massive, what a massive lock on this thing. This is going to be one fine rifle when it's finished. And I'm a trigger nut, and I work on all kinds of triggers on all kinds of guns, and I'm telling you, trigger on this one is nice, it's light. There's a tiny little bit of play in the trigger, which is what it's supposed to be. My goodness, what a light, nice light crisp trigger. That trigger's going to be a real pleasure. So I'm going to have to get a little darkish, a little darkish in here. So I got it, get it to that point. let it rest right there. <clears throat> well, I said I wasn't going to do any more tonight because it took a lot longer to took a lot longer to uh, fit the barrel 
and the pain into the stock, then you think Like I said, I'm going to enjoy the process of putting this thing together. Not getting no hurry. Now I'm going to pull out the the guide pin. You gently tap the main pin in. So that's got that one. Now I'm filing a little bit of a point, a little bit of a lead onto the, the, the actually this will be the last in to put the actually we'll have the barrel put completely together put a little bit of beeswax on it that makes it easier to go in Pull the guide pin out. And tap the main pin in. Then it coming out the back side. Yeah, let's just see if it fits. It should snap into place. It should just snap right into place. But it's not. So why not? Okay. So the to inlet the tang to inlet the tang and the, the barrel instead of being just kind of a drop in like everybody says and like I've seen on uh, YouTube like uh, Woodland Escape for instance said it just dropped right in take him two hundred hours well it didn't take me 200 hours but it took me all day pretty much all day to inlet this thing here the 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 tank screw and the two bolt screws or the lock screws on the other side they were about a third of a hole off and it, it took me all day to fit those and then <laughs> then the the patch box that wouldn't fit wouldn't, wouldn't snap in place took me took me quite a while to get that thing to work uh, I'll show you what was wrong with it but but the work <laughs> the worst thing so far was that front sight that's a wax cast and I'm amazed that that got out of the, that they sent this one out. I have worked forever on this thing. I'm trying to get it filed down to where it's a usable. So it, it had so many bumps and lumps, and but the worst part was voids in it. Just so many voids in it. I mean, I don't know if we're going to have a sight left time I get it, get it finished, but I'm going to... 
I'm going to call Kibler uh, Monday and see if they'll send me another one. This, 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 this is just subpar. I mean, don't get me wrong. The rifle is impressive. It's very impressive. It's a, it's a great rifle. It's a beautiful rifle. It's going to be a fine rifle. But whether it be humidity change or something, I don't know what it was. But all I know is the fitting of the fitting of it. It wasn't a, just a drop in from for me. I mean it. It took a lot of work, a lot of work. But I'm amazed that they got it as good as they did. You know? <laughs> it, it, it's very impressive. You won't go wrong with a Kibler kit. That's for sure. But this little sight. Anytime you cast something, a lot of them will come out good. Every once in a while, you find one's just subpar. Well, this one's definitely subpar, but I'm going to keep working on it. I'm about, I think I'm probably about halfway there, and then we'll see if we got enough sight left to use by the time I get it squared up and everything. We'll see. I'm just trying to get it to the point where I can start to use it to see what I'm going to have to do with it. To zero it. You know, I might have to file it down. Or I might even need a taller one. Who knows? So I come over here and I take a three-sided file and clean out the dovetail a little bit deep burn it I guess you could say and I've filed a slight lead in on the left side And a very slight lead on the leading edge of the sight as it comes in from the left and it is getting very close very close so, and I'm sort of hopscotching around all over the place doing a little you're going to have to take the gun apart uh, several times during the build of it. But I want to leave it together. It's pretty much assembled for as long as I can before I take it apart again to let all that inlet and everything, the wood, the metal, everything to settle down in there. But in the meantime, I'm going to do anything that I can while the gun is still uh, together. That includes working this brass down, getting the milling marks out of this butt plate. And it's got good flats in it. And I definitely want to maintain those. Sort of an octagon look. You come right up against this this fine work. The, the grooves and the little ridges. So I want to maintain all that. So I'm coming carefully right up against that. And get rid of all these milling marks. Like I said, I'm in no hurry. Get it done. I want it to wind up as as good a rifle as I can possibly make it. I 
And as my wife said, you're such a per perfectionist. Well, I've never done anything perfect in my life. For uh, many years, I was a, a home builder. And I always strive to build the perfect house. I never did. Well, some pretty good ones. And the owner may never find a flaw in it, but... I never was able to build a perfect one. But if you don't try for perfection, you just wind up with junk. My goal was always perfection. I never did attain it. But I surely did try. Finishing up the, the initial filing just to get rid of the milling mark. Now, <laughs> this is not a how to video by any means. And what I am doing is just kind of documenting the progress a little bit I'm, I'm just doing what I can do with what I've got at hand what I can do now like on the trigger guard I have polished this flat all the way around I've got all of this but I do not have these edges here because the stock is in the way here same back here. I'll do that after when I have to take the trigger guard off. Because I got to take the trigger guard off in order to do all this inside. You can see how rough that is. Maybe you can. Inside that trigger guard is quite rough, so I got to do that. And I'll have to take the lock off and polish it. Take it apart. But right now, I'm just hopscotching around all over the place. Like I said, <laughs> don't try to follow this thing as a how-to to put together a Kibler Woodrunner rifle. Because <laughs> I am hopscotching, literally, around all over the place. A little bit here and a little bit there. Till I get all the stuff that I need in to finish it with. So I'm just doing what I can at the time. But it is, let me tell you, it's actually, together right now, you could actually, I could actually shoot this thing. I could actually use it right now if I wanted to. But I've still got to put the, 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 the sights and the nose cap, but I'm going to put the nose cap on it here in just a little while try it back in. Like I said, I had so much trouble fitting this together. <laughs> you watch videos either from, from Kibler or like uh, Woodland Escape and things like that. They take the parts right out of the box, drop them, they just fit right in. <laughs> that wasn't quite my experience. The tank hole here and the the hole here that goes through the stuck through the uh, to the lock on the other side goes through the the tank 
and those holes were off. This one needed, the tang needed to come back about a third of the hole width. And then the, it, uh, the tang and, and the barrel right here needed to come back about a third of a hole width and go down about a third of a hole width in order to line this one up. In order to line these holes up, the whole thing had to come back in order, and to go down in order to line all these up. So that took, took me a while. And then the patch box, it did not just snap in place. It took a while to figure out what the deal was there and get that fixed. So <laughs> I have the kind of a reputation of if I order something or get something or buy something, the factory may have never turned out anything that was in the slightest bit defective. <laughs> but I have gotten an enormous amount of defective things. So when I opened this up, I was hoping that it would just fall right in, like everybody shows it. Nope. <laughs> no, sir. That just, that wasn't to be. But that don't surprise me. That don't surprise me a bit. But anyway, it is amazing what Jim Kibler has done. I mean, this is this is amazing. In, in spite of the fact that it took me a little bit of inletting to do here and a little bit of deal on the patch box and stuff, it's positively amazing what the man's done. They are awesome, awesome rifles. And the feel of it, my goodness. The balance and the feel of this thing is just incredible. I, I'm literally looking forward to getting her all together and, and finishing and shooting this thing. <laughs> but anyway, I'll hopscotch around all over it till eventually I get it put together. Right now, I'm gonna start to work on that nose cap. So the, the nose cap, I've already deburred it. There's a couple little burrs around on it. I've already Make sure there's no burrs on it. So in order to install the nose cap, I have got to take the, the rifle, I gotta take the barrel and the, the lock out of the out of the stock here. So, let's start doing that. Now what holds the barrel into the stock is the tang screw here and this lock plate, or lock screw. As well as there are three pins. There's one, there's two, and there's three. So I'm going to take those three pins out. As you see, I've got these pins left real long, so I can take them out whenever I need to. Well, but when I take these out, I might note that I put everything in from the left, from the left side. All the pins are started in from the left. So I'm going to drive them back a little bit, and I'm going to cut them off. These three, I'm going to cut off just a little bit. I'm taking the, the lock plate out. I took the tang screw out and the two lock screws. Take my lock out. And believe you me, that's an impressive lock.
So everything's released back here. Now I need to drive the three pins out. So anyway, I've got those driven back. Now I'm going to turn them over. And Now, with all the pins out, the barrel should just tap out of there. And out she comes, just like it's supposed to. So we get the I would call that you get down here with light gets on. I'd call that pretty much a perfect fit. Now put it back put it back together here now. My lock has a sharp little edge right here that I'm going to go ahead and knock off with a file before I put that back in. Just knock off that little sharp edge. So now the lock should just drop right back in. And amazingly enough, it does. Well, as of right now, I'm glad to report that a wood runner is completely assembled. Not finished. Just a simple. All except the sights. Now I've still got to put the sights on. But the rifle is well, I mean you could you could use it right now, as far as that goes. The whole thing is completely assembled and quite a bit of the polishing is done on it. But it's still got a lot of that to go. But it's including the, the nose cap. She, she's all done. Except for the sights and the ramrod. The only that's left now is just uh, the finish. Everything that got to be done to it from here on out will be pretty much in the, the name of finishing it. So. <laughs> and I'm waiting on a, I got to get a uh, few supplies in, some I've got, some I got ordered and some I just got to go up town and pick up to, to finish it. Uh, said I'm not going to be in any big hurry, but when this thing is finished, it is going to be a very nice rifle. I can't, I, the balance balance and feel of this thing is absolutely incredible. 40 years ago, 40, 45 years ago, I went down to Pigeon Forge and there was a custom gun builder down there then that had a, 
uh, a rifle like this. Slim, trim, I mean, it's just a pleasure, just super lightweight. But what he had then was a little 36 caliber squirrel rifle, and it was even a little bit lighter than this. But back then, 45 years ago, starting price was $2,500. That was a lot of money. But I had dreamed about having a rifle in that category for all that time. Now I finally got one. Or I got the makings of one. It'll be done. I'm not going to put a time limit on it, but just put it this way. It ain't going to be near as long as it has been. <laughs> Anything that I can do Right, I'm working right now on the inside, the under, underside of the trigger guard, which would be easier to do if I have the trigger guard out of the rifle. But the brass is to be easily distorted. Anything that I can do while the rifle is still together, you don't have near as much chance of distorting something. So if I can do it, you assemble. now starting the 220. I finished the 150 and that took quite a while because you, you want to get all the milling marks out but you want to maintain all the original lines. You don't want to lose anything. Sanding techniques one of them, a little foam sanding block that I made here to where you can follow all these contours sure you get the, get the idea now, like I said it was never my intention for this to be a how-to video but anyway if you want to know how to put together a Kibler kit that's the advice I can give you is go to Kibler long rifles Jim Kibler's got a rather uh, uh, complete set of videos on pretty much telling you how to assemble your rifle. But uh, I will kind of give a bit of an update on it. Right now, I'm working on getting all the brass. <laughs> Most of this is cast, and it's... Uh, <laughs> it needs a lot of work, a lot of work. So it's had a ton of, of uh, filing and sanding and a little bit of polishing with scotch bright and steel wool and, and uh, 400 and 600 grit uh, wet dry paper. So I've got the, the trigger guard all fixed up nice. It, it really looks good. I don't want to over polish it. I mean, that's a pretty good polish on there, but I don't want it any more than that. So, uh, so that's, that's done. 
the butt plate itself is done and that's a lot of work I mean whether it, this this piece was machined and you see all the machining marks on the inside well the machining marks take about as much work as it does the cast part and we've got the, the entry pipe it's done what I've still got to do, as far as brass parts go, I've got two thimbles, two small thimbles to do, and the nose cap. Now, I've also brought the stock, finished sanding it. Uh, I put, uh, sanded 150, 220, 320. And then I whiskered it twice. I wet it down with water twice and de-whiskered it. And then I applied the, some cherry stain to it. And this is a piece of cherry wood that was absolutely beautiful. When you wet it down to um, um, whisker it, cut the whiskers off, the grain in it just beautiful, but it's very light. And I, I've been making a piece of furniture or something, that's okay, but I want this stock to look old. When it's done, I want it to look like an old, well-kept rifle. So, I, I, I cut the, cher the cherry stains that you get uh, from Laurel Mountain, it, and man, it's potent stuff. If you use it full strength, it's just pure dark red. So I cut it down to probably got 75% thinner 25% uh, stain and I stained it and then I put a coat of pure tungle on a coat of tungle on and then to make it look even older I got bone black bone black and I darkened with bone black many areas on here that would normally be getting dark with age in use, either from oil, either from oil of taking care of it, or from your hands, or what have you, just use. So I've got it pretty well aged. It looks, it looks really well. It really does. I think it's quite beautiful myself, and it looks old. With all this blacking and what have you around here and there, even little touches like darken it around your entry pipes and and, and, and where your uh, thimbles are going to go and out at the tip but i've still got this brass nose cap i gotta finish that down but anyway the stock is got it's finished as far as the sanding and the shaping and all that one a coat of stain on it, one coat of uh, tongue oil, and some bone black applied judiciously here and there, just to add a little character, a little age to it. But when this is finished, it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful dark piece of cherry, and it'll go very well with the way I'm going to finish the metal on this. But when I get this thing done, I want it to look like a well kept but old rifle, a well-built, well-kept old rifle. So usually on the thimble, this is a, a one of the two thimbles. It shouldn't take too terribly much on this. Uh, first thing I do is I uh, I take a three three corner file, small three corner file. And I get right down in the bottom of that whatever you want to call it, wedding band or whatever it is you want to call it. Do that front and rear. Now you don't have to 
get over here on the rounded side, that fits down in your stock and it already fits. You don't need to be messing that too much. Another thing you need to, there's a little burr where it was cast, there's a little burr on the inside. So I'll take a countersink or two. And just smooth that out a little bit. Get rid of any burrs that might be in it. Then I go to a very small round file. They go back over the same same area. These are the easiest things to do. <laughs> Some of them, those others take a couple of hours or so to do or more. Like the butt plate and the trigger guard. Now I gotta get the the milling marks out of it. And I do that with a flat file. You can say draw file it. So after the initial filing is done, I go over it with the next step 400 grit paper wrap tightly around a very small rat tail file. Then I start right back where I started getting the, the grooves in these these wedding bands polished out a little bit. I'm starting with this little fine file right out at the point. Then I'll move paper back. Where the file's a little bit bigger. And I'll go over that same area again. same thing a little bit of 600 paper 600 grit and again I start right back where I was
after you get it to this point it don't take long with each paper then you're basically just getting out the marks that the previous paper left And when you get down as fine as 400 and 600, there's not a lot of marks left to take out. good if just an occasional little file mark left which is fine that's what I want then next thing I go to scotch bread pad this was pretty rough pretty rough and I just sort of go over the whole thing It's not really a scotch bright. it's, I think, probably the same thing, Kroger's name brand for it or something. Anyway, this one's not real rough, but it's fair rough, green. And it's just one step above that. 600 grit paper but each one of these little steps it just starts looking better and better I stopped short of getting a super duper polish on a, I'm sure precious few originals are that way. And besides that, I want it to look old and used. Still wool. Okay. I'm gonna sit outside here. I can really see good. I'm 
want to finish polishing this. Polishing this little nose cap. Okay. So now I think all the brass parts are filed and polished. That's the butt plate, the side plate, the entry pipe, both thimbles, and the nose cap. One, two, three, four, five, six brass parts. Oh, and the, the trigger guard. And one butt plate, side plate, trigger guard, entry pipe, two thimble, and nose cap. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven brass parts are now finished. coat of oil go. One little spot right there that the sanding wasn't exactly right. And I had to go and re-sand that or stain that. Okay, so right now I'm starting with the second coat of uh, tunnel. I don't know how many coats it's going to take. We'll keep applying them until, until it quits taking. Ever how long, ever how many that might be. Got a little diamond home. working down this frizzle, working out the casting and the milling marks right now out of the frizzle. Well, I got the lock all polished and fire, actually I fire blued it. Looks real well. I'm going to start right now assembling this thing. Okay. We're all back in it here now. is now pretty much completely finished and of course the the cheek piece side I've still got some more patina to do on the, the brass here I will use the black powder fouling that comes out of the gun when I shoot it to give it a little bit more of an aged look on the brass. The 
stock is butter smooth but it's an oil and wax finish it's a it's a tongue oil finish with the bone black here and there to give it an aged look and then I made up a, a wax that's beeswax and linseed oil mixture I melt that down together and rub that in on the stock it makes a a subdued but buttery velvety smooth finish on it the lock is fire blued except for the frizzing the frizzing is uh, I'd finish with oxford blue the barrel I've finished with oxford blue and then immediately come back with steel wool and steel wooled it down to give it that nice gray look uh, various places on it like the around the, the entry pipe that was a little bit of bone black on it to give out a nice aged look as well as around the thimble a little bit and the nose cap and I made the ramrod and it's got a little aging of the salt and vinegar aging on the uh, all the brass parts but right now like I said she is together she's looking good now it's going to be time to Take it out and shoot it. So this is going to be the first shot ever. with my Kibler wood drum. Bullseye. Bullseye. Hit exactly. What I think I cut that little cedar sapling plumbing two out there. <laughs> and it's not easy zero. This thing is going to be okay. <laughs> And here's the little sapling cut plum in two. <laughs> That's one way to get rid of cedars. The woods runner is one handsome, well balanced, good feeling, and first shot with. Rifle's not in zero. <laughs> Quite pleased. <laughs> 